All right, last night in a 15-hour votorama, senators took 41 roll call votes on a variety of politically charged issues. And with a 50-50 Senate, 16 of the amendments came to a dead tie, which put the fate of the measures in the hands of Vice President Kamala Harris. Any guess as to how those went? Well, in the end, the 51, by 51 to 50, the resolution passed shortly before 6 a.m. this morning. And it, as I mentioned, paves the way for the budget reconciliation process, which will be used for the massive $1.9 trillion, that's T, trillion, dollar blue state bailout. Now, at the start of the all-nighter, Republican leader Mitch McConnell took to the floor saying the evening would be educational for Americans. Here's what he had to say. Clip two, please. If we're to debate this phony partisan budget, we will create some clarity for the American people. We're going to put senators on the record. Expect votes to stop Washington from actively killing jobs during a recovery, like terminating the Keystone Pipeline. That job killing one size fits all minimum wage hike and whether to bar tax hikes on small businesses for the duration of this emergency. Expect votes that would help target this plan toward America's needs. Issues like stimulus checks for illegal immigrants, pouring money into schools where unions are blocking reopening, and the common sense step of delaying new spending until existing funds have actually gone out the door. We'll see what this resolution looks like on the other side and what signals Democrats send to the American people along the way. Joining me now to talk about what happened last night and what is ahead with the budget reconciliation measure measure is CNS News Editor-in-Chief Terry Jeffrey. Terry, welcome back to the program. Tony, thanks for having me on. All right, first question. Did uh, the debate last night provide clarity for the American people as, it's t- as it uh, <laughs> pertains to the two parties? Well, I think uh, if you wanted to stay up till 3 in the morning, <laughs> it, I think it does to the degree that... Uh, People get it out there. Obviously, a lot of the things they voted on, the liberal media doesn't want to report on. But it did put people on the record, and uh, it showed just how horrendous and far left the Democratic Party has become and uh, how they have complete disrespect, I think, for the values that made America great. Yeah, and in particular, uh, the issue of uh, the life issue. Senator Ben Sass having an amendment, the Born Alive bill, simply say, hey, if a baby survives an abortion, uh, and uh, we should not deny that baby medical care. I cannot believe every Democratic member voted against that, except I, I think uh, did did, um, did did Manchin voted yeah. the right way, I believe. Yeah, I think Manchin voted for that one. But it, there was a 60-vote threshold for that measure, which I was a little surprised by. So it did not uh, it did not pass. Um, Right. They, need, they needed the 60 votes to get the amendment through. And but you're right. Why, why would I mean, the issue there is so plain. Senator Sass's amendment is talking about a fully formed human life, a baby that has been born having survived an abortion. The, the abortionist is trying to kill the baby, but the baby is out of the mother's womb. It has survived. And the question is, then, do you have a duty to protect that life? And Democrats said no. I mean, that is unbelievable. And, of course, it's obviously something the liberal media doesn't want to highlight and focus on. But that is what we have these guys on the record saying. No, they don't want to protect a born baby. It's like Governor Ralph Northam of Virginia. Same thing, except they voted on in the Senate. What other – well, I, I, probably for you, you weren't surprised. But what, what other votes last night stood out to you as, as warning signs as to what America may be facing in the months ahead? Well, I, I, th- I think there's this overarching issue of, of Joe Biden's quote-unquote relief bill and the fact that now they've set it up so it can pass by a simple – they get 50 votes and Kamala Harris gets the, the deciding vote. You know, Tony, last year was the record spending year for the federal government. The federal government spent more than $6.5 trillion. And the reason it was a record spending year is because they spent $3.2 trillion on COVID relief. President Trump signed a $2.3 trillion bill in March, and he signed another $900 billion bill in December, bringing it up to $3.2 trillion. 
that money has not all been spent by the federal government. It's so much money, they haven't been able to get it out the door yet, all of it. And Biden's asking for another $1.9 trillion, which would bring it up to $5.1 trillion. And here's a way of putting that in perspective. Before the pandemic started, there were 158.7 million people in the United States who had a job. In December 2019, they were working. If you pass this bill that Biden wants, the COVID relief spending alone in less than one year, that $5.1 trillion, will equal $32,129 per worker. And the money that's already been spent in that $3.2 trillion is worth more than 20000 per worker. So I think American voters have to ask themselves, did they get $20,000 worth of benefits from the federal government last year from those bills? I don't think so. No. Do they, are, do they think they're going to get more than or almost 12000 if Biden gets his $1.9 trillion spending? I don't think so. But that's what the, the Democrats grease the skids for that. Last night, honestly, I don't think there's any way to stop it. And we have a government that's already $27.8 trillion in debt before they spend that additional $2 trillion. Uh, let, me, let me go back and underscore this for our listeners, because when you talk about uh, 32000 roughly, I'm rounding off, $32,000, that's just for the coronavirus relief spending that has taken place since last year. That does not include the regular spending, which is roughly at about $6 trillion, is it not? Some $5, $6 trillion? Exactly. If, if Biden's plan passes, they will have spent in the, in the course of one year $32,129 on COVID relief alone for every single person that has a job in the United States. So far, they've spent 20159 per worker. A Biden's would add, plan would add another eleven thousand nine hundred sixty-nine dollars per worker. So I, you know, I ask the listeners out there: Did they get twenty thousand dollars worth of benefits from the federal government from those COVID relief plans? No. In fact, the New York Times reported that only about four hundred billion of the money that's been spent went directly to combat the COVID epidemic. The other money went for other things. Some of it went to pay off local and state governments that did not. You know, people. When they get their paychecks, they look at it and they can see that state and local governments are already taking money away from them. Right. They're paying taxes directly to those governments. So now what the government did last year was they took your federal taxes plus money that they're borrowing on top of their $27.8 trillion in debt, and they're handing that back to state and local governments, theoretically because of the COVID uh, pandemic, but that money has nothing to do with the COVID pandemic. Right. So what what's happened is well, let, well, let me let me stop you. Government. Let me stop you right yeah. there because I, I want I want to emphasize this point. That's why I called it a blue state bailout. This money, primarily to the state and local governments, are going to governments that are mismanaged, governments that have been heavy handed in their coronavirus. Uh, response, closing down businesses, which has uh, declined, uh, caused a decline in their tax revenue, and we're going to reward them for their authoritarian behavior. Exactly. We, I, I think what we've seen happen over the last year is these people who love big government, who want government to control every aspect of our life, have used the pandemic as an excuse to expand their power and to expand spending, which is what they need the money to to use that power. And I, I think it's it's a serious question. I mean, it literally, the, the New York Times said only 400 billion of the 3.2 trillion they spent last year on COVID relief theoretically went to directly combat the pandemic. So most of the money went to other things. I think even by the New York Times analysis, they would not put it this way. I think if you look at it objectively, that extra money, that $2.8 trillion that they spent on things other than combating the COVID epidemic, were an excuse, were money to make the government more powerful right. and more intrusive in our right. lives. So, Terry, Jeffrey, when you look at the, the direct payments, is that, is that basically hush money to, uh, to voters to say, <laughs> you know, look, we're, we're spending all this money recklessly, but we're giving you some of it, too, so don't say anything in election time. Exactly. It's a bribe. And it's, and it's because the Democrats are the champions of it. It's a partisan bribe. And uh, people who actually work and pay taxes, which is, I'm sure, most of the people listening right now, uh, they already paid that money in taxes. So if, they, if the government wants to cut taxes, great, right. cut taxes. Yes. 
But this idea of handing out a check to literally everybody in the country as a way of trying to boost the political status of the politicians that did it is an outrage. I mean, it's a small form of socialism, which is the general direction that our country is heading in. I mean, if they have, if, if you know, if Bernie Sanders had his way, every small business would have to pay people $15 an hour, and, every, and the government would guarantee an income to everybody in America. That is the way we're drifting. Hopefully we won't get there, but that's the direction we're going. And the liberals in Washington are trying to use the COVID pandemic as an excuse to push us more in that direction. Right, and they're using the tax dollars of those who work and pay taxes to basically buy support from the American people with these direct payments, which are unprecedented. I know they happened during the Trump administration, uh, but this we've set a new precedent, and I think they're going to continue. It's buying off the American people. Terry Jeffrey, as yep. always, great to have you on the program. Thanks so much. I'll encourage people to take a look at uh, your piece. It'll give them heartburn, but they need to see it. Thank you, Terry.